our understanding of the Milky Way galaxy has come a long way. What first looked like a dusty band of light in the sky turns out to be an enormous spiral galaxy that is home to 100 to 400 billion suns. But there's literally more to the Milky Way than meets the eye. It's invisible to our telescopes, yet it makes up most of the mass of our galaxy. It's called dark matter, and by definition, we have no way of directly observing it. That makes estimating the mass of our galaxy very difficult. But thanks to new observations by the Hubble and Gaia space telescopes, astronomers pinned down the mass of our galaxy, setting the stage for a new probe into the matter we cannot see. Welcome back to Launchpad, I'm Christian Reddy, your friendly neighborhood astronomer. Understanding the mass of our galaxy is one of the most fundamental parameters we can measure. It helps us to understand how our Milky Way formed and evolved, and how galaxies work in general. But even estimating the mass of our galaxy is very difficult. To understand why, let's first take a quick look at the anatomy of our galaxy. At the heart of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole, four million times the mass of our Sun. It marks the center of the galactic bulge, a 10,000 light year bar shaped structure made of mostly of older stars. The bulge gives way to the disk, which features the spiral arms and mostly younger stars. It spans anywhere from 100,000 to 150,000 light years in diameter, but is only 1,000 or so light years thick. We are here, about 26,000 light years from the galactic center, living just off the galactic main line. Surrounding the bulge and disk is a halo of globular clusters, each home to hundreds of thousands of older stars. But all 400 billion stars of the disk, the bulge, and the halo only amount to a few percent of the mass of the galaxy. The rest is dark matter, which extends in a halo out to as far as a million light years from the galactic center. We don't know what dark matter is, but we know it's there because of its gravitational influence. If our galaxy didn't have any dark matter, stars would travel slower the farther away from the center they are. Instead, stars in our galaxy orbit at pretty much the same speed everywhere in the disk and halo. That means all of the matter that we can see, the stars, the planets, the spiral arms, are just the tip of the galactic iceberg. But how do you weigh a galaxy when you can't see most of it? Well, we can't directly measure what we can't see, but we can use globular clusters in the halo as tracers to measure their velocities. The more mass the galaxy has, the faster those clusters will move. Globular clusters make ideal tracers because they extend out to great distances from the galactic center. If we can measure their true velocities, we can weigh the galaxy, including its dark matter envelope, out to hundreds of thousands of light years. In order to determine a cluster's true velocity, we need to know three things. Its distance from the Sun, its velocity along our line of sight, called radial velocity, and its sideways motion called proper motion. With the proper motion and distance, we can then work out the cluster's actual sideways velocity or transverse velocity. Then we can use the transverse and radial velocities to work out the cluster's true velocity in space. Measuring a cluster's radial velocity is relatively easy. All you do is measure the Doppler shift of their spectra. The amount and direction of the Doppler shift reveals how fast the cluster is moving toward or away from Earth. But measuring a cluster's proper motion is very difficult. And that's because these clusters are so far away that their proper motions across the sky are very tiny on short timescales. For this reason, the true velocities of globular clusters had to be estimated based on measurements of the radial velocities, but estimates for everything else. These estimates were then combined with estimates of the amount and distribution of dark matter in the galaxy to come up with a, another estimate for the mass of the Milky Way. And unsurprisingly, these estimates ranged from as low as 500 billion to 3 trillion times the mass of the Sun. That's a pretty wide range, but that's the best astronomers could do because they didn't have any accurate proper motion data of globular clusters. Until now. An international team of astronomers led by Dr. Laura Watkins of the European Southern Observatory used data from the Gaia and Hubble space telescopes to make the most accurate measurements of the motions of globular clusters. Gaia is the European Space Agency's mission to create a three-dimensional map of the sky. It does this by making ultra-precise measurements of the positions, distances, radial velocities, and motions of more than one 
billion stars in the Milky Way and its satellite galaxies. In 2018, the Gaia mission issued its second data release, which included distance and proper motion measurements of 75 globular clusters. The team selected 34 pristine halo clusters that weren't obscured by the disk or contaminated by metals. These objects measured by Gaia ranged in distance from 6,500 out to 68,000 light years from the galactic center. Not only that, but the team used the Hubble Space Telescope to extend their survey even farther. Hubble has a smaller field of view than Gaia, but it can see much fainter and therefore more distant clusters. Not only that, but Hubble's been in space now for nearly 30 years, so it's been able to track the motions of some of these clusters for up to a decade at a time. The team added 12 clusters from the Hubble Data Archive, bringing the total sample size up to 46 clusters, ranging in distance from 6,500 to 129,000 light years from the galaxy center. After determining the individual velocities of the clusters, estimating their masses, transferring their velocities from sun-centered to galactic-centered, refining estimates of the distribution and the amount of dark matter in the galaxy, and a whole host of other stuff, the team arrived at an answer for the mass of the galaxy. 1.5 trillion solar masses, right in the middle of the range of the previous estimates. Maybe that's a little anticlimactic. It would have been really interesting if the result was something completely outside of the range of previous estimates. But it does set the stage for further refinement of these measurements. Gaia and Hubble are still monitoring the motions of the 157 known globular clusters surrounding our galaxy. That means more data on more clusters will be available in the coming years. That in turn will lead to even more accurate measurements of our galaxy's mass, which will help us to better understand the amount and distribution of dark matter. That in turn will lead to a better understanding of how dark matter influenced the formation and evolution of our galaxy, and indeed, how it led to the formation and evolution of the universe as a whole. If you want to learn a little bit more about the galaxies that occupy our local region of the cosmic woods, I have some videos on them that I'll list to here. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters for their generous support in making this channel possible. Along with a shout out to my two newest patrons, Claudio Bonaccini and Ed from Flash in Your Pan. If you'd like to get in on the action and help support Launchpad, please check out our Patreon page or maybe pick up a shirt from Teespring. And I'll have links to both the Patreon and Teespring stores in the description below. Now, if you'd like to join me, though, on this journey through this amazing universe of ours, well, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, stay curious, my friends.